just a random post on the massively OP with an advertisement of a new Korean MMO that looks like a mobile grand fest with a lot of predatory mechanics. And almost 10 hours playing, I am left surprised, fascinated, disgusted and depressed at the same time. And that's a great thing. Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex B and this is the first time playing, a series where I try a new game in the MMO genre to share my first impressions as a newcomer. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this, as we've made 18 more videos in the series and we are not gonna stop for now. Today we are playing The Mad World – Age of Darkness, an MMORPG from the Korean indie developer Gendisoft. While the game is their first project that they've published online publicly, they seem to be around since 2013 and working specifically on this one game, Mad World, using the HTML5 programming language. I'm not a huge expert in programming, but from what I've learned, this is the language used to construct the content for internet browsers. So, is Mad World a browser game? It's macabre. Technically, yes. And it directly starts on the official website if you press the big orange button play now. But you shouldn't do that. Apparently, this is the game designed for the Korean browsers only, because my poor crown was not capable of loading even the first introductory screen. Instead, I'd suggest you download the game client or wait for the proper Steam release. Moreover, while it is obviously very comfortable to play this game on the internet browser if it supports the game, I would also argue that it's not the safest way. The browsing data can be easily hacked if you are not careful, especially if you insert your payment information. Mm, no, no, no! So, download the client, which supports both the Windows and Apple machines, and start with a lot less issues. It greets you with the highly stylized graphical trailer depicting a lot of bloodshed and fighting and sets the whole tone for the game. But still, it doesn't make you prepare for what is coming. After choosing among three regions of the servers, we get to create our character, and the character creation is fairly balanced among being diverse and minimalistic. It is a set of pre-made faces and haircuts, along with the skin tones and hair colors. I always like the randomized button in this regard, as it shows how deep can the customizer go. Turns out it isn't capable of creating an abomination, and that is something I appreciate. We press start and immediately get thrown into the starry content. And this is the time when I've got to warn you. The beginning section of the game is grim, dark, ugly, disgusting and highly disturbing. Through the events of the story we either face or experience the acts of decapitation and dismemberment, cannibalism, food poisoning and vomiting, foul language and a lot of stuff Stuff that makes it so much different from other games out there. But it's definitely a game that should have a big freaking disclaimer that it is not for children, and it is not for the sensitive and impressionable adults. Because I'm no stranger to violent video games. I love it because it's trash. But I've never seen MMOs with such level of gore. Luckily, it can be turned off so that the foul language is censored and the violent moments are hidden from sight. Let's start with the story as we wake up in a pile of dead bodies without any memories of who we are and what are we doing here. We barely move through the dark and unwelcoming environments and eventually meet two random people who suspiciously invite us to the nearby village. We agree, but our path is being disrupted by the horde of demons who are not very welcoming here. And what do you think we do? We run for our life as fast as possible, while the game teaches us how to move with the mouse buttons. You can also choose other types of control if you prefer keyboard or even gamepad, which is a great touch. While running, we lose one of our companions, but we reach the key with another one and discover a weapon, which allows us to test our combat skills. We barely defeat a couple of demons, leaving our companion impressed, as it's apparently not common for locals to fight demons on equal footing. But we still run from the big demons. Upon running, our companion decides to betray us, but it is not helping her, and she dies from the demon servant in the most shocking and horrifying manner, leaving us alone. <laughs> That's fucked up. But that's gangster, right? No. We move to the dark encampment, seemingly the last camp that united local human population. 
And that is the beginning of the story of our character in the first act, a series of story quests with gradual implementations of separate MMO elements that are being explained gradually as well. Upon the first glance, it reminds the isometric action RPGs like Diablo, as the PvE content here is more dominant and I like that a lot. I also like how the majority of the characters are properly voiced by the Korean actors, and it is so much refreshing to hear the new voices, timbres and intonations from conventional English or Japanese voices used in MMO that only this specific trait made me stay in Medworld a lot longer than I expected. Obviously, I don't know Korean, so I've chosen to have English subtitles and they were heavily inspired by Disco Elysium, one of the most comfortable and innovative ways of representing text in RPGs right now. Easy to read, easy to track and easy to understand. My only nitpick regarding text in the cutscenes, as it looks completely out of place. Just look for yourself, it's an office text documentation on the highly stylized horror animation. But I suspect that it's the consequence of trying to interpret the Korean font to English, Maybe in Korean it looks a lot better. The story content seems heavily inspired by Diablo and Path of Exile, but in a lot extreme way. The local dark encampment is enslaved by the demon called Corpse Collector, and obviously he demands the consumption of dead bodies in enormous quantities. What is more important in this regard, the protagonist here doesn't feel like an ultimate hero who saves the day. Instead, he is a miserable misfit who does not know who he is and what to do with his life. Only after doing a lot of life-threatening tasks and enduring a lot of humiliation from the local demon-assigned police, he reveals former memories of how he used to be a student of some demon hunter and then starts recalling his combat abilities and skills. This is basically the story of how to live through a lot of darkness, depression, sorrow and eventually see some better days of hope. I won't spoil any story or side quest, but it is the story that I never expected to have from a browser game and sometimes it even left a tear in my eye in certain moments. My only hope that the rest of the acts here have not worse stories to tell. The immersion to the story was surprisingly complemented by the graphics. Why surprisingly? Because it is highly stylized, and this style between games like Sultan Sanctuary and Darkest Dungeon is not my favorite to be honest. But when combined with the voice acting and simple but great emotional animations of the main character and the side NPCs, I've come to believe in them being more live than the Stone Cold mummies instead of NPCs in some AAA MMOs. To me, this style of graphics resembled the shadow puppetry style, when the movements of the characters are never realistic but their abruptness and over emotionless in movements made them even more live than in conventional actors. At the same time, this style of graphics has shown how frail the humans are in this demonic world and how easily they can be destroyed. That also applies to the combat animation. While I don't like this jaggedness of movement in Sultan Sanctuary, I was left satisfied with it here. The combat here, due to the sound effects and simple graphical indicators, make it also rather responsive and more than enjoyable, especially for me as a fan of isometric action games. I still did not exactly figure out how do the skills work here. Mad World does not have any classes at the beginning stages of the game and instead allows you to use any weapon you choose to. For this specific weapon, there are various skills represented by specific gemstones, kind of like in Path of Exile, but you need to use them to learn the skills. What is more confusing? The leveling of the skills, as you need to apply specific items to enhance them, and sometimes these items work and sometimes they demand higher level skills which I don't understand. If there is something I am missing, please tell me in the comments, or these enhancement items are supposed to be used further in the game, then why are they dropping in the beginning levels? A mystery. The leveling is a lot simpler though. You have not many stats that you need to upgrade, just to use certain weapons and or armor. You even have the auto-assign button that assigns the skills according to the equipment of your choice. Moreover, you can freely respect your character with no issues and only after level 100 you need to use specific crystals to do so. And assuming that reaching such level takes forever, you are really expected to know what you are doing with the skills before respecting them. Further, upon reaching level 10, you get to choose the passive skill tree that is divided according to the weapon of your choice. I have chosen to use the one-handed magic wand and started building the passive tree. It also has the respect button, suggested path options and even application of multiple 
multiple passive points at the same time. If you want just to reach a certain perk and don't know what to build in between, you just click the perk and the game makes the choice for you. Simple and easy to get used to. I like that a lot. During the combat, you've got to use a lot of health and mana replenishment items and evade using the shift button. I am not sure whether there is some sort of block in the damage, but evasion works just fine and adds a sense of strategy for the combat. The loot from the mobs and bosses is also plenty, so you can always choose what to wear to become stronger and dismantle or sell everything else. The crafting and enhancing items also help in this regard, and this is the mechanic that I am less excited about, as it's traditional Korean BS. You enhance the items similar to the style of Lineage 2, when the plus 1 enhancement is 100%, the plus 2 enhancement is 75%, and you can still fail it. Additionally, with each failed enhancement there is a growing chance of breaking the item completely. There are obviously the items preventing the break and improving the chances of enhancement, but I haven't unlocked them yet. It also doesn't seem that these items are being sold via in-game cash ups. The crafting is simple and most of the time requires a recipe, and items if you want to craft something yourself or just the resources if you want to craft with NPCs. The more powerful items are obviously crafted from the boss gathered resources, which means that you'll be asked to grind bosses. And the boss fights are subjectively weaker parts of the game. In majority of cases, they are just represented by huge pools of HP that you need to chip away from. So if you keep attacking and circling around the boss, you'll be fine in majority of cases. The Corpse Collector battle was the most fun and it was the most flashy and graphic in majority of cases. And that fight made me think whether the devs were just gradually introducing the bosses from the simple HP pools to more dangerous and more exciting to fight. So maybe they just prepared the slow start to keep on things developing gradually. After completing the first act, we get introduction to many other mechanics like extracting essences and filling the item sockets to make them more powerful. Additionally, we get the daily and weekly quests to, to grind for in-game currency, and that's supposed to give us additional items, including the ones enhancing our skills. As usual, my final point of the review is the monetization of the game. It has a cash shop, where it sells the premium currency for real-world money. It seems that the game tends to push the battle pass that provides a lot of bonuses for people who regularly play and perform certain tasks and challenges, similar to Fortnite, Apex Legends and other similar games. And as far as I've checked, the battle pass offers the in-game currency and various crafting items like gemstones and enhancement stones, which are grindable already. So at least for now I cannot say that Mad World is directly pay-to-win game, especially if it is designed against the PvE content, meaning that you won't win by pouring more money into it. It seems that it's even less predatory in this regard than Lost Ark and Diablo Immortal, as it does not separate the premium gamers from free gamers, which is a nice thing. Further, I also like that there is no manipulation with the microtransactions, as the exchange rate between premium currency and real money is stable, regardless of the quantity of your purchase. One dollar can buy you 50 premium currency and keeps the exchange if you want to buy either 10 premium or thousands of premium currency. Thus, the battle pass costs 16 dollars, which is similar to the subscription for other MMOs out there. Impressive. So, Mad World is only spoiled by occasional server lag, the bugs when the quests and NPCs simply do not work, and FPS drops and even occasional absurds. The lack of proper tutorial page that you can review at any moment in the game is also not the best thing ever. What I appreciate a lot more, the Mad World is truly unique experience, full of tragedy, sorrow and horror, full of responsive and entertaining combat, full of loot grinding and crafting, and seemingly full of developer support as the devs keep on pushing various services at different points of the game gathering the feedback. I am more than excited to see how Mad World is going to develop in the future, and I am more than ready to return to the game at one point in the future, especially if you would like me to. <laughs> And that's it for today. If you like this video, please click a like and if you're here for the first time, consider subscribing to the channel. Share your thoughts and impressions with Mad World down in the comments below and let me know what other MMO should I review for the first time playing series. As for now, I thank you all for watching. My name is Alex B and I'll see you in the next one.